and welcome to Daily Prayer today for October 19th, 2022. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is uh, National New Friends Day, Day of Unity, Evaluate Your Life Day, Geelong Cup Day, Hegfish Day, LGBT Center Awareness Day. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy never cease, fresh as the morning and sure as the sunrise. So our reading today, we're continuing on in Genesis. We're in Genesis chapter 31. And um, the setup for this is Jacob and Laban, uh, his father-in-law, have kind of been sparring back and forth now for about a decade or so. Um, No, longer than that, because it's seven years for each wife. Um, And they've kind of come up with a deal that Jacob is going to take the black sheep and the spotted Um, goats and there's kind of a back and forth but Jacob has expressed an interest in going back home back to Canaan so that's where we are let's go ahead and read God's word for today now Jacob heard that the sons of Laban were saying Jacob has taken all that was our father's he has gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father And Jacob saw that Laban did not regard him as favorably as he did before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your ancestors and to your kindred, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah into the field where his flock was, and said to them, I see that your father does not regard me as favorably as he did before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times. But God did not permit him to harm me. If he said, The speckle shall be your wages, then all the flock bore speckled. And if he said, The striped shall be your wages, then all the flock bore striped. Thus God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. During the mating of the flock, I once had a dream in which I looked up and saw that the male goats that leaped upon the flock were striped, speckled, and mottled. Then the angel of of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. And he said, Look up and see that all the goats that leap on the flock are striped, speckled, and mottled. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and return to your land, the land of your birth. Then Rachel and Leah answered him, Is there any portion of inheritance left for us in our father's house? Are we not regarded by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and he has been using up the money given for us. All the property that God has taken away from our father belongs to us and to our children. Now then, do whatever God has said to you. So Jacob arose and set his children and his wives on camels, and he drove away all his livestock. All the property that he had gained, the livestock and his possession that he had acquired in Padan Aram, to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, Jacob is ready to go. um, And he's setting everything, getting everything sort of set up. So he goes to his wives and he says, here's the plan. We're going to leave. We're going to go back to Canaan because your father treats me like trash. Um, Every time we make some sort of agreement about having the speckled sheep or the the striped goats or whatever it is, right? Then that's the, those are the ones that breed and your fathers don't. And then he changes the parameters for 
how, how we're going to divide this thing up. And those sheep and goats breed. So again, back this is back to this idea that, that the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of multiplication, the I'm going to bless you and bless those who bless you. Um, it's with Jacob. He, everything he does prospers and God is providing for him. God is giving him all of this multiplicity. He has grown the wealth of Laban and Laban is trying to outwit uh, Jacob, but he's not able to. Jacob also tells of this story where he sees this angel who explains all of this to him, that in fact, I am blessing you um, just as I said that I would. I am the God of Bethel, the house of God, which is the place where Jacob saw the, the stairway or the ladder to heaven, and God blessed him there and, and pronounced the blessing of Abraham over him, saying that I will be with you if you go out of this land, and I will um, bring you back again. And we remember that Jacob said that if God brings him, is with him, and brings him back to his hometown, bringing his, him back to his land, then he will worship the Lord. Well, the Lord is now basically uh, calling him to that. Come on back, right? There's nothing that's keeping you there. Come back to the land that, um, the land of your father, you know, the land of Canaan, the land that I have promised, and I will be your God there. So they're getting ready to go back to the land um, and he's taking what he believes is rightfully his. His wives, they suggest, yeah, yeah, that's, that seems like a good plan because there's nothing for us. In fact, our father has spent the dowry that was paid that should have supported us if, if something went wrong. But he's spent all that money again. So there's nothing for us here. We might as well go with you. So that sets up sort of this next phase. Uh, Jacob is ready to go back to um, back to Canaan, and it definitely there's there is a hyperlink, there is a connection here to Abraham, or Abram at the time when he was called out by God and said, "Go to a land that I will show you." Jacob knows the land that he is being sent to, but remember he all he doesn't know what is going to be waiting for him there. The reason that he is in Padan Aram, in Haran, is because his brother Esau wanted to kill him because of taking the birthright and the blessing. He doesn't know what is going to, how he's going to be greeted when he comes back home. He doesn't know what has happened to his father. He doesn't know what has happened to his mother. He doesn't know anything, and yet he believes at least to a, a small extent, that God is going to be with him. So what, what does God call you to in ways that God doesn't always fill in all the answers, but that you need to go? How does God reveal God's self to you? The God of the one who has been, that you have seen before, that you have heard before, the God of your ancestors. What might be holding you back from stepping out in faith, stepping out, going to the place, doing the thing that God has called you to do, to be the person that God has called you to be?
Now let us join our hearts together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We lift our voices in prayer and praise Holy God, for you have lifted us to new life in Jesus Christ, and your blessings come in generous measure. Especially we thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ for all. The wonder and beauty of creation. The love of family and friends. Opportunities for faithful service. Particular blessings of this day. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks that you walk with us. That you go with us wherever we are called. Even if you don't always give us all the answers. We hold up before you human needs, God of compassion, for you have come to us in Jesus Christ and shared our life so that we may share his resurrection. Especially we pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Peace and justice in the world. those in whom we see Christ's suffering. Those who offer Christ's compassion. Particular concerns of this day. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Danielle, daughter-in-law of Sandy, who's recovering from a mastectomy and reconstruction surgery this week. For Jane Ann, who continues to recover and has not had particularly severe COVID uh, symptoms. For friends of Beverly's, as well as that friend's brother. For Kelly and Ernie with continued health issues. For Tom, Sharon's brother who has major health issues. For the friends and family of Vic, a close friend of ours. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, be our starting point and our haven, and accompany us in this day's journey. Use our hands to do your creation and use our lives to bring others the new life you give this world in Jesus Christ, Redeemer of all. Amen. Now we continue to praising the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for Daily Prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more 
like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, following us on Facebook and Instagram, and you can also receive this daily prayer via Substack. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thanks for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.